There is one more guy, though, that I, I think I got to put on my ballot. I think I got to put on my ballot. And um, I'm looking at the odds for defensive player of the year. And he's not anywhere near the top. But I think I'm, I think I'm sticking him on my ballot. Can, I, can okay? I step in? Can I step in for a second? Can I step in for a second? So I think, I wonder, I wonder, because I have somebody that was about to say the same thing, but I think you have uh, the other one. I'll say it that way. I think you have the other one in this conversation. So keep keep going, keep going. Who there's you? two of them? I think there's two of them. I think oh. if it's who, I think it is. There is another. Okay. Yeah. Uh, okay. yeah. Sorry. That was a 1983 movie reference. I was hoping that was better than my 1967 movie reference from, from last week. You got to keep moving it up. Keep moving it up. Yeah. And just go by decade. We'll, we'll, we'll hit the audience at some point. <laughs> They'll know what I'm talking about. Cody, I kind of think you have to talk about Joel Embiid in this conversation. Joel, that's who you're going to say. Mm. Like, yeah. Interesting. I yeah. think, man, I think Embiid when you look at the past, like, the rim protection numbers are incredible. And I think people do have, despite some of the issues that we may have seen offensively in the playoffs last year, like the rim deterrence that he showcased against the Celtics, I think that stands out nicely in people's minds. What 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 is your case for Embiid being up here? Oh, I think if Philadelphia has a good season, I mean, they're, they look very good to me at the start of the year. I'll, I'll say this about the 76ers at the start of the year. I think it's very clear, at least to me, that they are not much worse than they were last year. Like, that is the absolute bare minimum, right? They did not get much worse. The question is, did they get better and how much better? Mm. And it's a little addition by subtraction. It's a little growth with Maxi. It's a little changing things. We talked about this last week. I was really thinking about your Kelly Oubre thing as I watched them this week. Because if you put Kelly Oubre in a system where he has to make decisions, like the Golden State system, and he has to hit a lot of threes, that's, that's not his strength. If you put Kelly Oubre in a system where he's slashing, running, getting out in transition, crashing the boards, and finishing plays, well, all of a sudden, he becomes a lot more valuable. And that's essentially what he needs to do out there next to Embiid and to some degree next to Maxi. So if they have a good year, Yes, they're going to need a good offense as well to finish near the top of the conference. I mean, right now they're six and one. They're playing at a at a great pace. If I look at our uh, board for Patreon subscribers, patreon.com slash thinking basketball, Philly's clocking in at a 72 win pace just behind the Celtics for the best team in the league. That'll that'll regress down. You know, it's only a handful of games, but that looks at shooting luck. That looks at strength of opponent. And basically what you're seeing is, and this matches the eye test when I watch them, like, oh, this is still a really good team. This is still a team that's going to rip off 50-plus games, maybe 55-plus wins in a season like this and compete near the top of the conference, and they have one of the best defenses in the league to start. How do you get one of the best defenses in the league? You build it around the monster, Joel Embiid. You said it. Great rim protection. And I think there's a narrative hook there where it's like, it looks like they're thinning out their roster with Harden leaving. Who knows what moves they make for the rest of the year? Maybe this all goes up in smoke. But if you get to the end of the year and they have a great year, and maybe they don't want to give him MVP because they gave him MVP last year, and he tar- starts talking about how he's selling out on defense and putting up big defensive numbers, there's your defensive player of the year right there, Cody. Hmm. I'm, abs- I'm absolutely buying. Like These are stocks. I'm all in. You sold it to me. I think the one thing that the 76ers need to do to guarantee that they have a much better defense is Give Robert Covington more minutes. Let's get this. Let's get the band back together. The numbers from like 2017 between Robert Covington and Joel Embiid were were phenomenal, or maybe 2018. I don't remember off the top of my head. Yeah, 2018. Give him, yeah. Give him more minutes, and then we are guaranteed. But yeah, I think everything you said from the narrative side of it, uh, especially with the fact that Harden left, and it's like, oh, what are the 76ers going to do? I'm into this, Ben. I think Embiid is a really good chance of finishing high up there. Who Who were you thinking of? Who was your other? Uh, Princess Leia candidate. I thought, okay, it was a Star Wars reference. I just, yeah. I, I'm sorry I didn't get it off one line yeah. in the midst of it. That's, that's my bad. But, um, I thought you were going to say a rookie. And a I rookie? Thought were, I thought you were going to say a rookie that's different from the rookie I was going to say. Yeah, okay. No, I, let's talk about him. That's a okay. good one. Yep. Which one? Yeah. Well, if you look at the uh, sort of betting lines, the accumulation of the betting lines, the fourth favorite to win rookie of the year 
uh, sorry, to win defensive player of the year is Victor Wembanyama. Mm-hmm. Uh, I do not think the Spurs defense is going to be good enough to get him there. I do think, like, no matter what happens, he's going to get some votes. Mm-hmm. So if you look at the end of the year, whether he finishes 12th or 6th or 8th, somebody is probably going to vote Victor Wembanyama somewhere on their ballot just because of the sheer insanity of the defensive plays he makes, the sheer sort of obvious impact that he's having. But, you know, when your team struggles and you don't have a good defense and you're just a rookie, I think it's hard to get there. So Chet Holmgren is the other guy. Would you like to make a case that that he can climb up the boards here? Actually, I thought that was going to be the player that you were going to make the case for. Because I'm sitting here thinking that Victor Wembanyama is like a top five defensive player of the year, like a ward getter is like a lock. Like I would lock that in right now if we were lock if we were locking things, if we were a podcast that locked, I would so lock that in right now, despite the fact that their defense is just numerically atrocious. I don't think it matters. I think the clips, Ben, not the clippers, the clips are gonna be enough to get Wimbanyama quite a few votes. Numerically atrocious. I yeah. like that. Thanks for listening. You can find the full episode of this Thinking Basketball podcast on Apple Podcasts, Stitcher, Spotify, or wherever you enjoy podcasts.